I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and recently I bought the Honda EU3200i inverter generator. And there was a lot of comments on the video that I made on that generator. A lot of people said it was too expensive, didn't have enough features, or didn't like that it didn't run on LP. So I've gone out and I found this from Max Speeding Rods. This is a inverter generator that they're rating at 3500 watts. This generator actually has a larger engine and is rated for about 200 watts more than the Honda. And this one is loaded with a bunch of features, including some really cool convenience ones. Let's check it out. I should point out right now that this generator costs one third that of the Honda, which is pretty amazing considering all the features that this generator has. As you can see, I have the two Hondas on furniture dollies, and that's how I move them around the shop. They are kind of heavy, and if I need to move them from one part of the shop to the other, it's a lot easier to push them on furniture dollies. This generator, however, has a trick up its sleeve. You can see the wheels. It has wheels on one side and a handle that pulls out from the front. So you can just lift it up and easily move it around. I really like this feature, and it's very handy. As far as weight, both of these generators weigh about exactly the same. Let's put them down and compare the size. The max speeding rods generator is a bit taller, but it's not as long and probably equally as wide. Looking at the front of this unit, there is actually electric start on this unit. There is of course a pull string as well. We have a switch for high and low idle. Our circuit breaker reset is right here. Just like the Honda EU3200 and probably becoming standard on generators, it does have a carbon monoxide sensor. So the unit will turn off if you get a dangerous level of carbon monoxide in the area. One thing the Honda does not have is USB ports built onto the front panel. Just like the Honda, we have a 30 amp connector as well as two 20 amp connectors. And this 30 amp connector is the construction type. So if you're wanting to use this with an RV or a camper, you will need an adapter. And then down here in the corner, we have a parallel connection ports. So you can pair more than one of these generators together to get more power output from it. I haven't tested it yet, but I also suspect that you could pair it with a Honda if you wanted to. What these parallel connection ports is doing is putting the sine waves in phase with each other so that you can put multiple AC signals together on the same circuit. If we turn it around to this side. We have the access panel where you would access the engine and connect up the battery. There's also a little door on top for getting to the spark plug. On the back of it is venting for the air-cooled engine. And on this side of the generator, we have our pull string for starting and our fuel selection switch for switching between gasoline and propane, as well as our propane hookup. This generator has a conventional carburetor, whereas the Honda is fuel injected. But having an electric starter means there's no trouble in starting this unit. Just tap the button, wait a second, and it starts up. Once the generator is fired up, we have an hour meter. We can see our fuel level, the frequency and voltage of our output, as well as how much power we're using at the time. I bought this new tool on Amazon that I wanted to try out, and it's a sound meter. So I'm going to start up each of the generator individually. We'll see how much sound each generator makes when it's at idle. And then I'll plug in the fan with the heater, which should draw a lot of current, and we'll see how much louder they get. Let's start with the Honda. The Honda is now running, and at this distance, we're at 64 decibels, which is quieter than me talking. Now let's put a load on it.
now with the load on it, it's actually not that much louder. Still well below the volume of me talking. Now let's try the max speeding rods generator. Max speeding rods generator is now on. We're at 63.8 decibels. Now let's put a load on it. Here's the max speeding rods generator with a load on it. About 70, 71 decibels. And the display over there says that we're using 1400 watts. So about half of its capacity. That's pretty good. At this distance, it's still quieter than me talking. Now let's see what it takes to run this on propane. We have a port down here to plug our gas line in. Now we'll switch our fuel source from gasoline over to the propane. I'll open up my gas tank. Now let's give it a go. I think now it just switched over from the gasoline to the propane. Probably took a second to clear all the air out of the lines. Let's set this back over there and see how loud it is. We now have the max speeding rods generator running on propane. Looks like it's about 64 and a half decibels. Let's put a load on it. Now with the load on it, we're at about 72 and a half decibels. So why would you want a generator that runs off of propane and gasoline over one that just runs on gasoline? There's not as much energy in propane as there is in gasoline, so you're going to use more fuel if you're using propane. Propane, however, stores for a very long time, so if you're not using your generator that often, you could have a propane tank stored in your garage along with your generator, and your fuel isn't going to go bad. In an emergency situation, you know that it will start up and your carburetor won't be gummed up. The other benefit that I can see is that maybe you have a very large propane tank so the generator will run for a long time whereas when you're running on gasoline you have to rely on the small tanks that are built into these generators you'll have to fill them every few hours but if you have the generator piped into a very large propane tank it could run for a very long time I can't believe the value of this generator you are getting a lot of features for a fraction of the price of what a Honda costs Obviously, I can't tell you the reliability of this generator as I just got it. If this one did break, I could throw it away and buy another one and still not have spent as much money as I did on the Honda. However, if I was using this generator in a mission critical situation, time will tell if this is a reliable choice for that. But in my opinion, this is an incredible value and will probably fit the needs of most anybody. That's it for today, and if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.